Okay, let's start. So, I'm Duya. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about RPA, Robotic Process Automation. If you are in the round room, then there's another room happening at the other side of the, <coughs> of the room here. So, uh, may I have a show of hands? Does, uh, did anyone do any RPA before or currently working in RPA? Okay, one here. That's all. So you guys are mainly interested in RPA, like want to understand what's more to alpha, right? Yeah, you, you are at the right, right talks. So this is me, a machine learning engineer at NTUC right, right now. And I also do, when I am free, I organize events for the tech community in Singapore. We sort of do like you know, intro to Python, intro to machine learning, or sort of talks for free. So uh, you can always go to our website and find out more. And so this is my backstory. So I started as a community science student from University of Glasgow. Then I was an RPA analyst in Avanar. I moved over to you know, learn more about AI in AI engineer as AI Singapore. Then now I'm a machine learning engineer at NTUC Enterprise. So uh, most likely, you know, if you know about machine learning and AI, we used to use uh, R and Python as our main language to code. And because I have RPA background, I always try to find the similarity between my previous work and the current work. So if I can do Python with RPA, that would be great, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So this is my agenda. Uh, as you can see, it's very introductory to RPA and mainly you know, moving to how do you use integ integrate uh, RPA's processes with Python. So let's start. So yeah, these slides are opinionated. So it's really based on my experience. So what you hear from the industry and what you hear from your consultants or your boss and the online courses maybe slightly differ from you know, what I'm going to share, share with you. So don't take it too hard and you know, go and fight with other people who think differently from what I have preached you. So yeah, what is automation or RPA? Anyone knows what is uh, RPA? OK. so. There are a few questions that come out, right? Uh, there are a lot of buzzwords happening, like blockchains, RPA, AI, ML. Like people are talking about it, like not everyone understands what it means and what it does in real life. So uh, RPA is robotic process automation. Is it about making a robot, right? Or is it a business process, like where you have to like, you know, uh, plan out your business flow and everything? <clears throat> I have to break it to you, it just, processes, you're writing Python script or whatever script just to automate the business processes, which are repeatable. Those are non-decision making, so the RPA can decide things for you. So let's say you have a process of issuing credit cards. You have to check the personal backgrounds, you know, their salary and all this, and you got to come up with this formula and issue the card to the person. So all these steps are actually mapped out by the business, but you sort of want to automate in a way that is faster, more efficient, and uh, less error. So you will do that kind of thing using RPA. So how does it start as an RPA? Is last time people want to use like web scraping, you know, get text from the you know, website, you know, try, try to find the data for your machine learning model, and you know, try to scrape the website and uh, do automated testing for your software development. So that's how the RPA started. Then. When, uh, if you are from like an analytic background, you will try to like using, you will be using like Excel to use macro to automate some of your stuff like report generating or maybe uh, sending like some uh, test messages to somewhere using macro, which is mainly like uh, coded in uh, like a .NET or something similar. But you are using more and more. If you are in the banking domain, you probably yeah, use more than Excel right now. You have a SAP system and all these sort of other platform that you will be used in your daily life to generate some other things. So you cannot just use Excel Micro, cannot just rely on Excel Micro to do this kind of automation anymore. You have to move over to RPA. That's where the RPA is born. OK, so this is one you're going to use RPA. If you are from software engineering background, this is a bit. Uh, like a business related than uh, software engineering related. They will ask me things like, uh, instead of having RPA process, I could just build a system or API backend or microservices to do this job. Right? Why do I bother with using RPA? Let's take this uh, process for example. Your boss asks you to like, create an account for a new driver. Right? So you have to you have to go into the system, you have to key in the particular, and then you have to you know, create an account for him. 
But that's a very manual process. Everyone can do it. They just have to follow the steps. So the next one, if you have to automate all these things using a script, you, you will just need to create an endpoint you have to have exposed to your database. Then your architecture will be mounted on top of it as an API offering. Then you can call those API services. But those things require you to like re-architecture entire thing. You have to build your own you know, backend system to have this kind of flexibility. Although this is faster and like more reasonable for software engineering person or, or the, the team that which has more software capability to do, if your team just consists of like a business people, RPA make more sense because RPA, it will just be doing the task that you do every day for you. So if, as you can see, like if you compare the first process and the last process, all those people are being replaced by a robot. So every steps will be, uh, will be do by a robot. So the bot will come up with like, you know, log into the portal by itself. You can search it. You can create the account for you. Then end of the day, you get a result that you wanted as you are doing it manually. OK, then what are the benefits right, of using this kind of uh, RPA tools instead of you know, hiring some data entry person? So these are all the benefits. So let's think about it, right? If you are going to hire a data uh, entry person, you got to pay the person hourly rates for a certain period of time. Then once the person leaves the company, the knowledge comes with him. So you won't have a person who is proficient in doing this process. And if you want to do it again, you got to hire the person again. And you have to, like, if the person is new, you got to retrain it over and over again. If you replace with a robot, the script itself is a, you know, it's like a standard template. So it will just do the same thing. Whenever you run it, you know, like for now, in the future, it will do the same thing. And it's also scalable. So how often are you going to like do this? If you want like five people to do data entry, same job, at the same time, they will have a different speed of doing certain things. So if you have an RPA process, they will all be doing at the same speed, same time, with the same behavior. They don't have human error at all. So that's the selling point of RPA. If your process is repetitive, you know, uh, and also very, you know, a mundane task to do for a person, you just automate it using an RPA, schedule it, you can scale it, you can do it very well. There will be less error compared to a human person to do it. So yeah, now you sort of have like a basic idea how this RPA works and what's the you know selling point of having RPA. This is how you plan it. If you want to have the RPA process in your organization or your work, you need to have these uh, four steps, checkpoint to go through. You cannot just like, okay, today I want RPA, I want to integrate it, I want everything to automate it tomorrow. It's not gonna work. You have to have a roadmap to plan from the start to the end. The first one will be planning. So you got to plan what kind of process that you want to automate. So some process, if you are from the industry, you will know like, oh, so some steps are redundant. Some people, they may have you know, a backup copy from one place to another place, or their sources are different. Some people are communicate through email, all sort of thing. So you've got to standardize all those practices. Maybe you like uh, less in user input, more of like a repetitive software uh, scripting. So you need to plan all these things. You have to assess the current state. You've got to remove all those like more user interference at a little as possible. Then you will have the automated process flow. Then you can start using RPA to do it. So after that, you have to design your process. So designing in a way that your RPA is like usually work from start to the end. So your intervention of like uh, the process shouldn't be in the middle. If not, the process have to be wait until you do something that it will process on. So you want to go from start to the end your process should be able to carry out entirely by the RPA system. Instead of, you know, user have to be sitting in the middle, I have to, you know, put this file at this point in time. If not, my process will fail. So that's not going to work. So you've got to have like a process design laid out before you can roll out the plan. After you have all this design, then you've got to start implementing. So implementation part is a bit tricky because sometimes you've got to you know, do a lot of A-B testing, which is better. You know, sometimes the person can do the task better than the robot because they have like hundreds and I don't know, 20 um, scenarios that can happen in certain type of scenario. And if the rules are not stated in the RPA script, 
then you can never capture all these sort of like, a, like a rainy day cases or the edge cases that happen in the business world. So all those implementation have to be you know, very carefully, carefully planned out and implemented and have to do a lot of testing in order to you know, leave it as a black box and run it every day. After that, once you have the RPA system being set up, you have the process running, you need, a, some, you need something like a dashboard to maintain or monitor all those processes. Now you know how many processes are running, what time are they running, what are the output, you know, what are the input, what happens if it's failed, is it rerunnable? Is it like, for example, if your RPA systems are system dependent, like um, you have a database, so your database going to like, you know, going through some uh, migration system or something, then you got to, you got to know that RPA thing has to be informed in terms of monitoring and like pausing the job for the particular day that you know, database is not available. So that's it. And uh, there are other use cases that I have uh, encountered during my analyst uh, period. So I would like to share with you some of the use cases that you know, I have encountered so that you have some rough idea how the RPA can help you in terms of your daily work or maybe the job that you will be doing in the future. So just keep in mind, RPA is sort of like automating some business processes that you know, doesn't require a lot of user intervention. So one of, the costs, uh, one of the use cases I'm going to say is about auditing. So if you are like in the banks or if you're in like a, some big company, you have these uh, dedicated audit teams that you know going through the logs. What are you doing? You know, uh, where are you in this point in time? Whether you come back to office in the middle of the night, take something from your office and go back. All sort of things, they have been tracking it. And, and they also have to validate, right? Whether is it uh, uh, allowed to do or whether this is suspicious sort of activities. So imagine, right, you have like uh, 1,000 employees every day come to your door, then you got to check the log every time whether this particular person is on leave, but he's come to work, or whether this particular person is not allowed to access the door, but he, he came into the door, all sort of things have to be done manually. It's very painful for the person to do it, and have to imagine you have to, every day-to-day -day work is like just morning, just look at the logs and you just take whether this person is like, you know, uh, clear to go off from the audit team or not. So all this thing is very uh, manual and very repetitive. And also it has to be, you know, uh, there's a lot of human error involved. If you, if you know that person, that he, if all those, the person is doing something wrong, you also have like human biasness. Okay, the person I know, I trust him, so I don't, you know, uh, flag him as a, suspicious activity. So all these things have to be uh, minimized by using RPA. So RPA will give you higher coverage because you can scale out, you can do it really fast. Checking from uh, one test to another test for a human is quite long compared to a computer. Computer just check the bytes and bits of the data to check whether these particular things are the same or not. So you will get a faster result, more accurate, and you can, you can cover higher. Let's say your company scale up to one million, company, one million employees, you're gonna have a hard time keeping up with just the one uh, audit team, right? So you've got to expand more audit team which incur more costs. Then instead of having that, you have RPA team, just to, you know, robots helping you track all these things, checking everything, which is more scalable and better. So the next one is uh, digitization. So now we are at the age of digitization. You are moving from paper-based systems to uh, system-based. So we have like a database. Last night, people used to uh, write things in paper. You know, we have a form to fill now. Most of the things are using Google Docs, you using a website front end to fill out the form. So let's say you want to, like you have, you're in a business, you want to move from paper-based system to a system, like a you know, like proper system with like uh, relationship databases and all this sort of thing then you need to hire people who are data cruncher. They have to read the paper. They got to type into the system. So if you want to think about it, how many of you want to do that kind of job whereby every day you got to do a paper, you got to read out, then you type all this information into a, into a machine. Very hard to find a people who want to do that full time, right? So even though you want to, you, can, you are able to hire it, you, you cannot scale out the person, you cannot, ask him to do 3% job with the same efficiency. So this is where RPA comes in. So you just have to train RPA to do just one thing. Then it can just do everything for you. So now we have uh, 
OCR technology using like computer vision technology at the back uh, to extract text from images. So all you have to do, just scan the image. You have the image already, then you use AI to extract text from it. Use RPA, copy the text, put it into a system automatically for you. And you see the flow. So first thing, you have a paper. You scan it, get an image. You use AI, extract text from image. Once you get the text, you put it into the system using RPA. So RPA can replace the job that people doesn't want to do. But it, ha it cannot be a decision-making process. It has to be a something that manual, like a rule-based process to do it. So the next one is uh, on-demand process. So one of the projects that I work for is more of like a credit card issuing, like you have to issue this person in like two hours time. So let's say the person wants to get credit cards at night, maybe like 10, 10 p.m. How are you going to get the employees that you know, want to validate everything in short time until like 12 midnight? You cannot call your employee back just to do the validation. So you need to pay in all these validation steps into a RPA script. It can do all this checking really fast. Then it can be online 24-7 for you to consume the service. So this is the one advantage of RPA where you can just have a RPA just waiting for you to give him a task to do instead of you know, hire a person 24-7 with shift, uh, yeah, rotating amount. So that's one of the things. So uh, I have talked about a lot of use cases, a lot of good things about RPA. Then this is something that is not really uh, good about RPA. I would say RPA is not everything. So if you talk to like a business consultant or something who are selling uh, RPA solution, he will say, oh, my RPA can do like, you know, 100% of your business processes or can automate this, automate that. But most of the talks are okay. Uh, most of them are correct, but some of them, you have to, you have to do the check, uh, fact check before you can like, say, no, okay, I'm going to do this in RPA. Because there are other things that RPA can do. Uh, one of the advantages is, it's really fast, it's error, less, less error than other people, but uh, it's, going to, it's going to be like, very difficult ma uh, managing a decision making. For example, just now the credit card issue, it can only validate the facts for you, but it cannot issue a credit card to a person because it, it has no ability to determine whether this particular person is a criminal or not criminal. Unless you provide him a rules that oh, it has a criminal uh, records, then you have that in, in, a bit in place. But the decision making of whether you know, this thing is go or not go, it relies on the person. And uh, if, you, if you read the news, there are something about RPA being replacing people's jobs. Like I mentioned before, if you can do really well in RPA. You don't need to hire data entry people anymore. You don't need to hire people who, who sort of like uh, just doing their job every day, which doesn't change for like past 10 years. So all these, th all these jobs will be replaced by RPA. But what RPA is really replacing is the process. It's not a job. So if your job really depends on the process that can, anyone can do it with like a set of given rules, then probably it will get replaced by RPA pretty soon. But what you should be doing is when RPA is implemented in your daily work, you should be looking out for more challenging tasks or more meaningful tasks that you can do. For example, if you, if you are IT personnel who do like uh, security or maybe account management, how often do you think creating account is beneficial for your career? I don't think it's like creating 100 people into your system is going to give you a more bonus than building some uh, you know, cool system or some checklist to do or some process improvement presented to your boss. So you should be focusing more to that than uh, just uh, complaining about, oh, RPA going to replace my job in 10 years' time. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you are an RPA consultant, then you probably have to deal with a lot of people who really against automating their tasks. Because let's say you are working one day, then your boss asks you to uh, automate your process or write down the rules of your process, what's the first thing you would think? Hey, am I going to get replaced by this RPA robot? Right? So if 
the RPA consultant come ask you, hey, what do you do every day? What are the steps and all these things just to replace or automate your task, right? You will be a bit of hesitance to tell everything that you know. Just because, you know, if the person know everything, then what, what, how do I keep my job? Yeah, so that's always the negative side of RPA. People will be against you to tell the process automatically, 100% what they do, right? Or some people are really scared that if you know everything, then you're going to report back to the boss and the boss say, hey, you've been doing nothing for past two years, then you get fired, right? So, so not everyone welcome RPA. That's, that's the thing they have to take note. Okay, so yeah, this is one of my inspiration. I like to automate things. Then this guy, he automated his job and he even made the coffee machines to brew coffee for you. So what he does, right, he has this uh, sensor in his chair. So once he step out, step out, the sensor will trigger a script to the coffee machine. So he need to walk about two minutes to the coffee machine. By the time he reaches the coffee machine, the coffee is made for him. That's how he did it. So he didn't even have to, you know, press a button in a coffee machine. Coffee machine makes for him. So this is one of my inspiration to you know, pursue automation RPA. Yeah, you, you, can, you can read it afterwards. Uh, so after I have you know, uh, experienced RPA, I want to do my own, right? I want to automate a lot of things. I want to automate testing good morning, good night to my girlfriend or, you know, <laughs> I want to do all those things. So how do I start? Then there are, these are the tools that are available in the market right now for you to use, but some of them, is, is really, really intended for business users. So you need to buy a license. The license, like in, you have to buy 10 license at one go, then it costs like 10K, then how are you gonna pay for that from my own pocket? I couldn't, right? So there are some, uh, some libraries that you, you can use for free, but those are community version. As you know, community version, there's always a limitation. If you want to scale out or if you want to run 24 seven, you got to pay some money out of your pocket. Then now I'm machine learning engineer. I use Python almost every day. So if I can sort of use Python in a way that can automate something, that would be great, right? So I was exploring uh, RPA tools for Python, right? Then there, I found two. The, my, my, my sort of my criteria are it has to be free to use. I don't want to pay a single cent to use it. Then the other time is open source. So if I want to integrate something, or if I want to improve on the code, right, I could do it because it's open source. And the other is that I have to use Python because that's the most uh, familiar language I have currently using. And I can integrate all these steps into my work. So I found two. One of them is called uh, Tech UI. Those Tech UI is mainly for like uh, desktop automations, like visual automation, they have OCR in place, and you can also integrate uh, TensorFlow, Keras, together with like uh, tech UI. Then the other one that I found is more of like Automagica. Automagica is mainly for like a business users because they have like an Excel sheet that you can manipulate automatically. You can uh, connect to SAP and do some, some, some form of like assistant automation. So these are the two tools that I found which are totally free to use, open source, and also they are they're using Python to do it. So if I go to that, So this is Tech UI Python uh, Git repository. So this is basically what uh, it can do. So you can have, you just have to import all this, then you just type. Then all these uh, steps are being automated by itself. You can take a look at the back, and if you're going to stay, the next talk is going to be all about how to use Tech UI and how it's going to come about. Okay. So yeah, you can have a look. He has like a visual, virtual automation is basically, instead of by finding the elements, you just have the picture. It will go and find the picture and click something for you. This is OCR automation, is like extracting text from you know, uh, images. Then there's keyboard automation. You are going to type something like good morning in your telegram or some bot, or like you write email yourself. You can do that. The mouse automation is there as well. So another library is called, uh, Automagica. Automagica is more of like, you know, uh, automating this kind of window programs. You can automate paint. You can also automate Excel. Like you can go to browser, find something, put it there. Yeah, this is like, this is more of a window sort of thing. But if you want more of like a, a platform and bias, you can use Tech UI. Tech UI is a Python package, so all you have to do is just uh, pick install tech UI. Then you get all the functionality in your repository. Yeah. 
So that's C and So uh, from here, right, RPA, I think, is, have become popular last five years. Then there are people who want to improve more to RPA. And it's a, it's a shifting progress. Then now I talk about how RPA being unable to decide something for the human. They are exploring with the rise of AI, there's an assisted RPA. So an assisted RPA will be like uh, be making decision for people. So, so you have like uh, your boss approving stuff, right? All this stuff will be automated using an assisted RPA. So all you have to do is map out the process. Everything is done for you using AI at the back. So these are the useful links that I have. I think the organizer will share these slides with you <laughs> once it's over. Or you could just email to me and I can send this to you. Yeah, this is pretty much my talks. I cover intro and the goods and the bads of all the RPA and also uh, some libraries that you can use in the Python. So if you're interested in like learning more about tech UI, you could stay back. There's another talk, which is the continuous of what I'm going to do. It is, will be delivered by the founder of the tech UI itself. So I met him when I was in AI Singapore. He's an amazing guy. So he, he developed this thing by himself, one person. So you could ask a lot more questions about how you build RPA library. Yeah, for any question for me before I go off? Can be about anything uh, RPA versus AI.